Hey there and welcome to Retouching Skin Section 5. In this section we're going to be going over the sample and paint method of skin retouching, which is actually my favorite version of skin retouching because it gives you a ton of control and allows you to create really nice smooth skin as well. Alright, so we're going to be using the Flurn Retouch 5.jpg. Let's go ahead and hit F for full screen and zoom in. Okay. Now, up until now, we've learned a lot of different techniques when it comes to smoothing skin and, and working with skin and things like that. And the sample and paint method is a way for basically skin smoothing, um, but we're going to combine the sample and paint method with frequency separation in order to get our skin texture back on top of it. Okay, so we do want skin texture and uh, the sample and paint method is for smoothing skin not for removing blemishes. So the first thing I'm gonna do before we get started in this is I'm just gonna to go to my spot healing brush tool and we're gonna move remove a couple blemishes because this is always the first step. No matter what kind of retouching you're doing, you always wanna remove your blemishes first and this is just gonna get them out of the way. So when it comes time to doing smoothing, which is done on a larger scale, you don't have to worry about this stuff. All this stuff is gonna be gone already. So on a new layer, just using the spot healing brush tool, and painting over some of the little blemishes and things like that. All right, there we go. And you guys learn these techniques in the first section of retouching skin here. All right, so nothing too crazy, just getting rid of all the like blemishes that are kind of standing out here. All right. There we go. So when people think of skin retouching, this is often like the extent of what they think of. It's like, okay, cool, you remove all the little blemishes. And that is definitely an important step in skin retouching, but it really is just that. It's just one step in skin retouching. There's a lot more that goes into it, and that's where sample and paint technique comes in. All right, great. So we've done a good job at removing little blemishes and things like that. That's always going to be the first step. All right, so let's just turn this layer off and on and see, I was able to do that pretty quickly while talking to you, so <laughs> it's really not that hard to do. All right, the next thing we wanna do is run our action for frequency separation. So we're gonna go down to our window and over to actions, and we're gonna go, go ahead and load, I <laughs> can't talk. We're gonna load Flurn frequency separation 8-bit. This image is 8 bits. Let's go to image and mode, we can see it it is eight bits. If you're working on a 16 bit image, just be sure to run the Flurn frequency separation eight bit. And if you don't see these, go down to your menu here, and let's go down to load actions. Then you're gonna wanna go to your getting started folder, actions, and then here, Flurn retouching, hit open, and they'll show up right here. Okay, so basically, we went over the last section of what frequency separation does, so let's go ahead and hit play, all right. Hit OK there and continue. Okay, so basically what this action does is it separates out the skin color, which is on this layer, from the skin texture, which is on this layer. Okay, now the reason why that's important is because we have skin texture on its own layer. So no matter what I do underneath this layer, let's just say I paint with like this color underneath her skin, there we go you see we still have the skin texture intact because it's on the layer right above this layer. So no matter what we do here, we're gonna have skin texture intact. And that's where the sample and paint method comes in. And again, this is my favorite method of retouching. So the sample and paint method basically works like this. I'm gonna just do a quick little uh, example. What we wanna do is sample an area of the skin. So Alt or Option, and click on the skin while you're in your brush tool. So brush tool, and then hold Alt or Option, click on the skin. Okay, that's gonna sample that color. Now, also, when you're sampling, you wanna make sure to sample, let's see, <laughs> I never go to the eyedropper tool. Here it is, the eyedropper tool. Okay, we wanna make sure we're sampling like a five by five average here, okay? We don't need to sample a point sample, which is just one pixel, five by five average works very well. All right, so first go to your eyedropper, Make sure you're at five by five average, then go to your brush tool. And then anytime you want to sample, just hold the alt or the option key. It'll turn to the eyedropper and then you're sampling color. So it samples that color, samples that color, samples that color. As long as you hold alt or option, all you're doing is sampling color. And you can see our main color changes here. Okay, 
So after we've sampled our color, what we're gonna do is start painting in this area. Now in this case, I'm gonna keep my opacity and flow at 100%. So let's sample this color here, and I'm gonna paint right over here. You can't really see that. I'm gonna sample here, paint right over here. Sample here and paint here. Sample here and paint here. So what we're getting is basically samples in different parts of this image, and I'm painting basically right over top of wherever I'm sampling. Now, keep in mind, the main goal here is skin smoothing, guys. So all these little transitions between like, see how it's dark here and light here, and then it's like light here again, and then dark, and all these little transitions, these are the things we kind of want to minif minimize by using the sampling and paint method. We basically want to sample these areas and then blend them together. And that gets rid of any sharp or like hard details in the skin, and it gives you a very nice smooth look. So I'm sampling and painting. Now in this case, our opacity is super high, so we get something that doesn't look realistic at all. However, once we actually get into this, we're gonna be using an opacity, sorry, rather a flow that's quite a bit lower. Not only that, but we'll have skin texture over top. So that's basically the idea of the sample and paint. All right, let's go ahead to our brush tool. I'm gonna to right click here in our brush tool, and we're gonna go ahead and load some of the brushes that we provided with this tutorial. So hit B for the brush tool, right click, and then you're gonna to wanna to go to this little uh, gear up on the top here. And I'm gonna go down to where it says load brushes. Okay, now here in our getting started section, we have brushes and we have Flurn retouch brushes. So we're gonna hit open there. All right, and here we have our retouch brushes. So we have retouch 50, 100, 200, 400, and 60, 600 rather. The reason why we have different sizes is because you want to generally paint with the size brush that's applicable for wherever you're going to actually be affecting. For instance, if you're going to be painting on her cheek, you want a nice large brush because it's going to smooth a large area. If you're painting under the eyes, the 100 size brush is pretty good. If you're painting in smaller areas, maybe you want to choose a size of 50. Super large areas, 600 will work pretty well. So it's just a really quick, easy way to change your brush size to the most commonly sized use to most common sizes. You can also, by the way, just hold down the control and the option key and click and drag from the left and to the right. That's gonna change your brush size. Now, if you're on a PC, it's gonna be control and alt and right click from left to the right. Okay, so there we have um, most of the explanation. The last thing I wanna explain here is the difference between flow and opacity. All right, so the difference between flow and opacity. As of now, our opacity and flow are both at 100%. So when I paint, it looks like that. All right, now if I bring my opacity down to 50% by hitting the number five on my keyboard, as I paint over top of my image, you can see it's only 50% visible. But if I go back over a place over and over again, it doesn't actually build up any paint. I have to lift my paintbrush off or my cursor or my pen tablet, whatever you're using, and then come back on and paint with another layer. And then we see the overlap of the two creates a buildup. And if I do it again, it'll build up even more and more and more. All right, but I have to lift my cursor every single time, right? And generally that's not really the way a regular, like an ink marker, you know, <laughs> if you keep going over a place over and over again, it's going to build up. Okay, and that's how flow works. So let's bring our opacity back to uh, 100 here and we'll bring our flow down to about 10%. You can hit shift one on your keyboard. That'll bring your flow to 10%. So now, as I go over an area, you can see as I go over it over and over again, it's going to build up my effect. So if I just paint over a little bit, it's only gonna put a little bit of paint down. But as I keep going over a place over and over and over again, it builds up more naturally, much like a marker or something like that actually would. So I prefer to use flow because I find it much more natural than opacity. Okay, hope that makes very clear. So what we're gonna be doing now, we're gonna be using the retouching brushes that are included. Start off with size 200 here, maybe 400. There we go. And we're going to be sampling and painting on this layer in between our image and our texture. The reason we're going in between is because we always want the texture on top. All right, and we're gonna be using a flow of about 10%. Okay. So the goal here again is to smooth and blend our skin. So you don't wanna be zoomed in here. Like 
This is a good zoom when you're doing blemish removal, okay? For the smoothing and blending of skin, you wanna be a little bit farther out. Okay, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Don't, <laughs> don't be afraid, it's okay. It's just a layer, if you mess up, you can always just delete the layer and start over. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and choose a nice large brush here. You want your soft brush, sorry, you want your brush to have a 0% hardness as well. All right, we're gonna start sampling here on the cheek and then I'm just gonna start painting a little bit. And this is one of those techniques that it's not so much like an instant gratification thing. If you start to see too much of a change too quickly, chances are you're doing it wrong. As you can see, I'm painting here. I can barely even tell that I'm doing anything and that's exactly what we want. The reason there is because the change that I'm going to apply to this image is really, really gradual. And I want that change to be gradual because I'm literally painting new skin onto my subject's face. And if I don't do a good job of it, I'm going to ruin her face. I'm gonna make her look like a, some, someone else or like totally take away the shape of her face or you know the tone and things like that. And probably not gonna make the image look any better. My goal here is to smooth out transitions between areas of light and dark. So for instance, this area is a little bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is hold Alt or Option and sample right here, and I'm gonna paint a little bit. Then I'm gonna sample right here, and I'm gonna paint a little bit right there. Sample right there, paint a little bit right there, sample there, paint, sample, paint. Over and over again. A slow buildup, slow and steady. That's what we want. And you want your brush size to pretty much reflect the area that you are trying to affect. So if I'm doing a smaller area, like under her eyebrow there, I'm gonna choose a smaller brush. It's gonna help the effect look a lot more natural. All right, you want your brush to be about the same size as your actual affecting area. There we go. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is quite literally just painting new skin on her face, which is colors that I'm sampling from the image. So you do have the opportunity to really mess things up here <laughs> if you're not careful. That's why I recommend staying at a really low flow because it's gonna help you move slowly, which is gonna help you make less mistakes. All right, and staying at a level of zoom way out like this really gives me a good idea of how the skin looks as a whole. You know, we can zoom even farther out because this is not one of those cases where I'm worried about, you know, what's going on at a poor level, okay? This is like, how does the skin look transitioning from like cheek to brow and things like that. That's what we're focused on. Like what does the skin look like over, you know, from here all the way to here? What does that transition look like? Are there harsh transitions? Is it a smooth transition? What does that look like? And again, we wanna go super slow and gentle with this no reason to rush it. All right. So you can see basically what I'm doing is smoothing out all these transitions between the light areas and the dark areas on my subject. All right. And our subject here started off with really great skin, but pretty much everyone benefits from this technique. Um, even if you are working with someone who's got great skin to start with. All right, because we're just evening everything out. This is, you know, there really isn't. <laughs> there aren't really people that have transitions this easy from one area to another. Not easy, but smooth rather. All right, now keep in mind, you are also completely able to shape the face. For instance, if I wanted to carve a new cheekbone, I could grab that lighter color and just paint it in there a little bit. And then now we have a little bit more of a hard cheekbone, a hard line for a cheek. You can see that there. All right, that wasn't really that well done, but that's why we're always creating new layers because it doesn't really matter if you mess up one layer, you can just delete it and start over again. All right, everything we do here is in layers. It's just a lot of flexibility. Okay. Now, throughout this entire process, we've been kind of talking and I've just been holding the alt or option key and sampling and painting and 
you may be wondering like, did this really actually do anything? Well, I'm kind of wondering the same thing myself. I think it has. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on the before and the after so we can see what this actually did. All right, so let's go ahead and merge those two layers. Here's our before and our after. There's the before and the after. So you can see it still looks like her, right? It still looks like her. If I zoom in, we have all of our skin texture is still in stack, intact because it was on a completely different layer to begin with. It was always on this layer. So whatever I do with this layer doesn't really affect our skin texture. This is just painting new colors. And in this way, I'm able to really control the skin smoothing in my image. And as you get more and more advanced with this, you can use it to basically fix all kinds of big blemishes. You can sculpt cheeks. For instance, if I grab this darker color, I can come down here and do a little bit of sculpting. All right, I can grab a darker color here and come in here and sculpt that away too. All right, I didn't really like that, so <laughs> we're going to delete it. Now, not only that, but you can do this with arms and legs and all kinds of other things too. Now these are actually easier. Skin on the face is like super sensitive, right? You want to like get that right. You don't want to, you're going to make a face, face look really weird really quick if you don't take your time. But on the rest of the body, it doesn't matter so much. Basically just sample and then paint the area that's similar. So sample and then paint. And you can really do a great job cleaning things up very quickly. Sample and then paint, sample and paint sample and paint all right there we go all right now i'm kind of doing the quick version of this because we're in a tutorial and you don't have like two hours to watch me do this one portrait but take as long as you need when I was first starting off doing this, it, it took me quite a while to do a portrait. Now I can do it a little bit more quickly because I just feel more comfortable. It's like anything else, like, you know, when you first learn to drive, you're like freaked out about everything. And, you know, <laughs> after a couple of years, you're doing it like it's your job. So same type of thing, guys. Just take it slow to begin with. And once you feel comfortable, then keep on going with it. All right. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after. This is the before and the after. Now, if you find you do too much, simply lower the opacity. There we go. It'll give you a result that's a little bit more realistic looking. Beautiful. And like I said, this is my favorite technique for retouching large areas of skin like this and skin smoothing because it works so well. You've got your skin texture intact, skin texture intact and you've got a really good idea of just how the transitions in a face work. It's also going to teach you a lot about lighting as well. Like for instance, this area will always be lighter because that's like facing upwards, a che cheekbone, and this is facing downwards. So it's going to teach you a lot. All right, let's go ahead and look at the before and the after. We're going to group all those together. There's our before and our after. So you can see, it still looks like a portrait. It does not look overly retouched at all. It's just a nice, smoother, even version of the portrait with all the skin texture still intact. All right, guys, that is the sample and paint method. Have a lot of fun practicing. Don't forget to use the custom brushes that are included with this tutorial. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next section for dodging and burning.